Okay, so at this point, we have our wax and our image. And as soon as we start to rotate these, it's going to be really difficult to remember which way was up. So oftentimes, if you didn't do a whole lot of deep carving, like in these regions here, um, you may not know where all your low reliefs are. So it's always good to say, okay, well, I do remember that when I carved this specific dot, that is in reference to this hole right here. And so based on the fact that my wax is relatively square here, and uh, I'm looking at that orientation, I want to label up, right? And so I'll take my reference drawing and I'll just come over and just say like, this is, this is the uh, relative up position. Up, right? And then for the wax, it's not really gonna stay that way, but you can write on the edge. And then at least you don't lose your frame of reference when you carve. If you don't do that step early, it's very easy to get lost when you've got something like kind of topographically matched, like a moon. Um, if you're doing an image like a star, it's going to give you a little better response, right? Because you'll know, oh, okay, well, you know, the shape is that shape in reference. But um, we're just going to start doing some basic carving techniques using the um, pokey spoonie tool. This is the pokey end and this is the spoonie tool end. It's got some good carving shapes that allow us to get down there quick and we're going to try and kind of hollow out this region here and this region here and anywhere where there's a lot of that flecking we know that we need to carve down into these darker regions. So um, it's a pretty straightforward process and we're just going to use the sharp edge to really hollow out those grooves. So I'm just taking the tool and raking it against the surface of the wax and then cleaning it so I can make sure that I'm within my footprint. And um, things like the moon don't have to be exact. When we're doing faces, you'll start to realize that that layout matters, but as you have to take off so much material, it's not something you have to worry about too much in the beginning. So I'm just raking across the surface chipping away at the areas that are really broad and then you can change your orientation to come from a different angle like so and i may have to switch the lighting just so um, the camera can record what's happening in process but just know you want to find a position that's comfortable for your hand and right now it doesn't have to be super detailed we're just trying to rough out the print of our design so that we get a good idea of where our orientation is without getting confused, right? So we just want to come in and give ourselves a couple of landmarks so we know where we are relative to our object. Right? So this, this little shadow here is representative of this little shadow here. And then this perimeter will need to be carved out along with this perimeter and this peninsula here matches the peninsula that we see there. Okay. So the more time you spend stippling, the easier it is to get your orientation and the less time you spend stippling, the more you have to rely on guesswork. Um, so I'll spend forever just stippling and stippling and stippling to get the perimeter until I'm sure I've got it. And that's why I like being able to peel back the tape because you can just kind of Say, oh, did I get it? Is it clear? Do I know what I'm looking at? If the answer is no, you just go back. More pokey tool time, right? So we're just trying to get those low spots marked out fairly clear. So I've got a little shadow. So we're just going to carve out this region here, like so. So the nice part about the spoonie tool is it allows you to get those broad swaths fairly quickly to rough out your perimeter. And then when you know you've got a circle, let's see if we can get the lighting to move correctly so everyone can see without my hand in the way. So you can use the point, and I'm just raking against the material. And that's going to create a low relief perimeter. So I know where my moon ends. And this works with any shape. 
you have a jeweler saw, you can come back and saw in that line. But I still like cutting the trough, just so I know which line I'm supposed to be following with my saw. And oftentimes, I will just manually carve out the entire shape, um, because you have to hollow it out from the back anyway. So, by the time you get down to the thickness you want, uh, the jeweler saw is kind of terrifying, because your wax can be so thin, you'll end up cutting through it. So we're not going to rely on the jeweler saw for these initial carving videos. Remember, this is sort of carving in a diner style, like you're at a cafe, or you're on a road trip, or you're you know, on an airplane, and you just want to make some jewelry, and you've only brought a couple of tools. Although I don't think they'll let you bring this on an airplane. Say, oh, that's not a carving tool. <laughs> it's something else. So you just work your way around the edge. Raking that corner does not need to be pretty for now. You just want to establish that perimeter, right? So you're trying to bring the foreground up and then the background recesses and then that's what gives you the full shape. So um, that raking tool, you'll find that the round tool and the pointed tool work fine. And I should clarify if you want to bring your, let's get the lighting right here. If you want to bring your tool perpendicular so that you're scraping with the actual point, that works just fine. Okay. So I'm just carving that line straight down. And you can either pull away or you can pull towards yourself. I always find if you're pulling towards yourself, having the flat face rather than the beveled face gives you a cleaner cut. The beveled face wants to wander more. The flat face just gives you a nice, clean, sheer plane. So establish that perimeter. Like so. And that's really all you need to know when you're using the carving tool, right? So you can you can draw a line straight up and down. Change the lighting again. That's better. So you can draw the line straight up and down, like so. Or you can drop your angle down and really sweep material away. And that's gonna give you a lot of opportunity to get the carving you need across the material. But you're always keeping it firmly placed on your tabletop or your bench top. You'll find when you're carving material, if you're floating, your hand tends to resist itself. And for flat things, that's, that's a big deal. Um, once we get to rings, you'll find that holding the ring in your fingers is probably the easiest way to handle the thing because we're so squishy. Um, we've got a good way to grip it. So again, we're trying to remember where our orientation is for up. And there's our up. And you can see that the Sharpie is starting to wear off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my pokey tool. I'm just going to carve up. Okay. So now we have our quick marker. We know which side is up. We know which side is down. If you want to take these rougher edges and you want to smooth them, you can switch to the um, flat edge. Let's get this back in focus. There we go. Get the flat edge of your spoonie tool. And I'm just raking across the surface. That gives you a nice smooth surface, but you can see there's still a little bit of waver to it. So you'll have to switch um, degrees, so perpendicular to where you were or 30 degrees to where you were. And that'll help smooth it further. And you'll just go back and forth between one direction of rake angle. Get that back in focus. And the next direction of rake angle. So as you go back and forth, you'll find that you get a slowly approach, a smoother and smoother surface. And then from there, you can come back and it's much easier to carve with your pokey tool. You're just going to write. So now everything's labeled, and I'm going to go to time-lapse, and we'll continue carving out this moon.